John Summers played the film. He wrote that song. Yeah. 
So just for a little bit, baby, I come and dance with you. So just for a little bit, baby, I come and dance with you. So just for a little bit, baby, I come and dance with you. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hang on, I'm nearly there. Quick adjustment, evening all, evening all, hee ha. Thought we'd have an American uh, evening tonight. In special honour of, uh, of Patty, if Patty's on the call. <laughs> so we'll, uh, you know, I'm running out of hats, folks. What can I say? It's getting, it's getting serious now. So there we are. So. We've got 23 on. We'll get a few more just joining us shortly. Give them a couple of minutes to catch up and see how we all are. How are we all? All right. A bit, uh, bit more drizzly last couple of days, but good for the grass, as they say, apparently. Don't ask me about grass. Not a clue. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it seems to be going uh, all going swimmingly. And as you've seen, you know, we've had a little uh, step up to four balls. So um, here we go. It's all, it's all, all happening. Right. How are we getting on? Have we managed to kill a few people off? We're only on to 22 so far, so we'll just do a little bit to, to get us going. Um, we said 8 o'clock, and I hope that the uh, message got out, because we did 8.15 last time, and then that didn't work. So it's, I hope who's out there? 23? Here we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so we'll begin as uh, usual then with the, uh, the answers uh, to the uh, devious Damon's uh, after after quiz, 
um, and uh, and those were so here we are. Uh, so the bonus uh, questions. These these these. Uh, fair credit to the boy. Obscure is uh, is not the word, is it? So here are some of the uh, the bonus answers from last week's uh, bonus round. Um, so what colour is hippopotamus milk? Uh, oh, well, there's a couple more. Hang on, just a couple more. So we're just doing the answers. Hippopotamus milk. Believe it or not, it's pink. Who would have thought it? Pink hippopotamus. Sounds like a Disney thing, doesn't it? Um, who defeated Poseidon to become the guardian of Athens? Good grief. Uh, that was Athena, hence the name Athens, one assumes. Uh, what does the military acronym NAFI stand for? The Navy, Army and Air Force Institutes. He said he was a little bit flexible with institute, institution, etc. Um, in what year did the dodo become extinct? <laughs> Within a decade, he said, so it's pretty good. It was 1662. That's very, very specific. Perhaps it had a, uh, a Best Buy date on it or something. How do, you, how do you know it was 1662? That's when dodos died out. Um, and then all of the following statements are true except one. So it rains glass sideways on planet HD 189733B. Uh, coffee is made from beans. The wing speed of a European swallow not loaded with a coconut, is 11 metres per second. Uh, it takes about a week to make a jelly bean. And a great Pyrenean dog named Duke was elected mayor of Cormorant, Minnesota, in 2014 and continued to win elections to his retirement in 2018. Uh, so the false one is coffee. Um, so coffee isn't made from beans, uh, according to researchers and scientists, so it must be true. Um, they're seeds and not beans. There we are. So there you go. So the only, the only, the only thing about coffee beans that I know is about civet coffee, uh, which is the the one that they give to uh, civet cats, wild cats, um, and then uh, when they uh, digest it and pass it through, it doesn't get digested in the system. When it comes out the other end, they sell them on to us at about um, forty-five pound a kilo for some reason. Sounds delightful. Okay, so I hope you're all sat down and, and comfortable. Um, got your beers or drinks or wines or whatever your poison may be and nibbles. And Natalie's helped me out greatly this week um, with uh, with some of the questions. Uh, so uh, hopefully they're uh, they're not usually quite as random or obscure as my ones, but we shall see. So if you're all sitting comfortably, we'll we'll make a start and we'll uh, go on to round one. Now round one is Blue Peter. Everybody's seen Blue Peter at some time or other, so hopefully you'll know some of these uh, answers. So all you've got to do is name the Blue Peter presenter from these clues. So I uh, shall give you the year that they first presented the programme, and you need to give me their name, please. So question number one, first presented the programme in 2008. Later known for her sport relief challenges, which presenter, uh, which also included cycling to the South Pole and kayaking the entire length of the Amazon? So what's the name of the Blue Peter presenter who first started in 2008, later known for sport relief challenges, which included cycling to the South Pole and kayaking the entire length of the Amazon? Wow. Right then, so question number two, which Blue Peter presenter that first started in 1983, she reported that in 1987, she was sacked from the show for being unmarried and pregnant. But in recent years, she said she was fully supported by the Blue Peter team. So what is the name of the Blue Peter presenter? We started in 1983 and reported that in 1987 she'd been sacked from the programme for being unmarried and pregnant, but recently has stated she was actually fully supported by the team. Question number three. What's the name of the presenter who started in 1987, who later established her own TV company and her first production was Most Haunted? where paranormal experts investigate various locations. 
all completely true, of course, all of it, all of it. What was that? Okay. So, name of the presenter who started in 1987, later in establishing her own TV production company, and her first production was Most Haunted Paranormal Activities. Question number four, then, which TV presenter? Uh, started in 1992 and was married to DJ Peter Powell and then later to Grant Bovey. Bovey. So which Blue Peter presenter started in 1992, was married to DJ Peter Powell and then later to Grant Bovey. Question number five, started on the show in 1959. And though not actually an official presenter, his artwork contributed to the show through the 1960s. So which BBC Blue Peter presenter started in 1959 and although not an official presenter, was known for his artwork that contributed to the show through the 1960s. Question number six. Started in 1997. Didn't last very long uh, because he was sacked uh, the following year for admitting taking cocaine. Which apparently is a very bad thing to do on a children's TV show. Oh, no, it wasn't on the show, was it? But there we are. Started in 1997 and was sacked the following year for admitting taking cocaine. Question number seven. So this is a good one for those that have uh, got the memory. 1958, he was the first ever male presenter who stayed until 1967. So starting in 1958, the first ever male Blue Peter presenter, and he stayed until 1967. What was his name? Question number eight, name the Blue, Pre Blue Peter presenter. Blue Peter presenter, that's not easy to say. Uh, started in 2000, and he now presents Country File. So the Blue Peter presenter, who started in the year 2000, and he now presents Country File. Question number nine, then. Uh, started on Blue Peter in 1980 and went on to marry DJ Mike Smith in 1989. So started the show in 1980 and went on to marry Mike Smith in 1989. And then question number 10, which I hope everybody should get this one. Started in 1965, the longest serving male presenter who appeared with a sheepdog called Shep. <laughs> Sadly missed. So started in 1965, the longest serving male presenter who appeared with his sheepdog, Shep. Okay, so there you go. There's a Blue Peter round to get you going. That should have been a fairly nice, relaxing start to the evening. So get your scores scribbled down, put them onto your score sheets. Don't forget that bonus question that Damien would have set for you as well before you submit them. And um, let's have a little look and... Start chatting. Let me know how you're getting on. Cheers. Right then. Here come some answers. So the Blue Peter round. Here we are. The Blue Peter presenter who started in 2008, later known for sport relief challenges, which included a kayaking up the Amazon. That's Helen Skelton. Helen Skelton. 
Question number two, starting in 1983, reported that she'd been sacked from the programme for being unmarried and pregnant, was Janet Ellis. Janet Ellis. I presume that was pregnant with Sophie Ellis-Bexter, I guess. Uh, question number three, starting in 1987, uh, the person who established their own TV company about uh, paranormal activities is, of course, Yvette Fielding. Yvette Fielding. Question number four, um, married to DJ Peter Powell and then la later Grant Bovey, 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 I don't know, uh, Anthea Turner. So Anthea Turner uh, was the presenter who, who married Peter Powell and Grant Bovey. Uh, question number five, starting in 1959, um, the uh, artist who contributed to the show was, of course, Tony Hart, Tony Hart and, and said gallery. And then question number six, uh, started in 97, sacked for following year for admitting taking cocaine. And that was Richard Bacon. Richard Bacon. Now, this is a blast from the past. The first male presenter who started in 1958 on Blue Peter was Christopher Trace. So Chris Trace. Question number eight, uh, the presenter who now presents Country File is Matt Baker. Matt Baker. That's a bad accent, bad Cumbrian accent. There. Matt Baker. <laughs> Seems like a jolly nice chap. Question number nine, then. The uh, presenter who married DJ Mike Smith in 1989 was Sarah Green. And then, of course, question number 10, the longest serving male presenter who appeared with his ship was good old John Noakes. So John Noakes, the answer for number 10. So there we are. Oh, oh, Brian's put his score up before we actually gave the answers, which is good. So that's, <laughs> that's positive, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, have a little look at that. I'm going to put my hat on a more jaunty angle because it's too small. And get your scores down from there. Hopefully you've got a few uh, a few points on that round. Okay, so if you've got those scores all uh, typed into your answer sheet, we'll move on to uh, round two. Oh, I'm getting the ping. That's all coming in thick and fast. Hang on, oh, I'm missing something. <laughs> that's good <laughs> all right good well done Trev that's okay yeah we're sorted I thought you were telling me that I was uh you know back to front or upside down or something but we're okay so far so we'll keep going right there you go that's round number one there you go Pete Fourhouse well done Pete I always knew you were a Blue Peter fan can you make me a Tracy Island for Christmas Pete please that's super right okay so round two then pens or pencils crayons art brushes, whatever you've got at the ready. Uh, so this should be a fairly quick one. These are acronyms. So acronyms. I will give you the letters of a said acronym, and you will tell me, or you will tell your answer sheet, uh, what that acronym stands for. So let's have a little go at that lot. So question number one. And we want proper proper words, not making up words. You've got to get them all for a point. So number one is... NASA, N-A-S-A. -A. So what does NASA actually stand for? I'll give you a couple of seconds on that because there's some very long words in that one. <laughs> so NASA, what does that stand for? Okay, question number two. What does the acronym USB stand for? USB. We all know what it is. What does it mean? What does it stand for? Question number three, 
What does the acronym FBI stand for? FBI. Question number four. What does the acronym RADAR stand for? So what does RADAR, R-A-D-A-R, stand for? Question number five. One for you kids out there. What does LOL stand for? L-O-L. -L. We're not doing the other one that starts. We're just doing L-O-L. -L. Question number six. This should stir up some memories from uh, parties in the 60s and the 70s. BYOB. So, what does BYOB stand for? Sometimes it was just BYO, but it's BYOB. Okay, question number seven. Less party based, unfortunately. IED. So you would have heard about them in lovely places like Afghanistan, etc. IED. What does it stand for? And then question number eight, what does the acronym TLA stand for? TLA. And then question number nine, one of my absolute favorites, laser. So what does the acronym laser Star Wars, -y. what does it stand for? L-A-S-E-R, laser. Again, some big words, big words in that one. So I'll give you a couple of more seconds. And then question number 10, it's all written on the corner of the, things in your living room, but what does HDTV stand for? So we all see it every day, but what does it actually stand for? HDTV. All right, there we are. So I'll let you uh, have a little scribble of those, check your spellings. Now points wise, I'll let you be your own honest judges of these things. So um, I think you need to get at least 80% of the words right, but I'll let you uh, I'll let you use your own conscience. Good grief. It's anything like our golf scores. We've got to, we've got some big scores coming. Okay. So here we go. So question number one, the acronym NASA uh, stands for the not the uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Question number two, USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. Universal Serial Bus. Not the red London type, a little stick in the side of your laptop type. Question number three, FBI is the Federal Bureau of Investigation. 
to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Question number four, radar. And this is the one where you're gonna to have to be honest with yourselves. It stands for radio detection and ranging. Radio detection and ranging. Question number five, LMFAO, no, sorry, LOL, stands for laugh out loud. So it's probably not happening in your living rooms as we speak, but I'm doing my best. Laugh out loud. Question number six always used to be scribbled at the bottom of a party invitation or on the back of a fag packet if there was a party you were going to. BYOB is bring your own bottle or bring your own beer. Bring your own. Question number seven, IED is an improvised explosive device. So the IED is the improvised explosive device. And question number eight, rather appropriately, TLA stands for three letter acronyms. Uh, so very often you'll be in a meeting and, you, and it's nothing but TLA. So there's no real words in the meeting at all, some of the ones I go to. TLA, three letter acronyms. Question number nine, laser, here we go. Laser is the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Oh, love it, love it. So light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So you can score that one as you will. <laughs> and then number 10, HDTV is high definition television. High definition television. As I always say to, to Natalie, they go, oh, we've got this, got HDTV4, it's super this and super that. I haven't got HDTV eyes, so there's not much point having an HDTV. But there we are. That, are, that are your acronyms. They are your acronyms even. Uh, so put your scores down from those. As I say, I'll give you a little, uh, little uh, team discussion about um, laser and NASA and whether, whether you think you've got the words right enough, good enough for a point. And then we'll have a little, uh, little drinky and move on to round three. Okay, so here we are, round three. This one will get your um, get your get your thinking caps on, um, and um, you know, particularly uh, aimed at, uh, at Steve and Patty, or, or Patty particularly. Let's see if we if we know anything about this little lot, shall we? So, pencils at the ready. This one is U.S. presidents. Yeehaw! So, question number one on U.S. presidents: What year? was George Washington inaugurated as the first president of the United States? So in what year was George Washington inaugurated as the first president of the US? This one's an interesting one. Question number two, what's the minimum age of someone who wants to run for the office of president? So what's the minimum age of somebody who wants to run? Not the maximum age, that's about 135 by the look of them at the moment, but what's the minimum age to run for the office of president? Question number three, how many US presidents have been assassinated? So I just want the number, if you can name them, then all credit to you, but the point is just for the number of US presidents. So how many US presidents have been assassinated? We're back on that round again, aren't we? <laughs> can you be fascinated by assassinated? Yeah, possibly. 
How many? Question number four. Which president's first lady opened a clinic for drug and alcohol abusers? Which president's first lady, so the name of the president, not the name of the lady, who opened a clinic for drug and alcohol abusers? Damn decent to open a clinic for them. I have to go to the co-op for mine. Question number five. Here's another one. This is another little uh, little useful pub quiz for the future question. Which president served two non-consecutive terms and is therefore counted as both the 22nd and the 24th president of the United States? Mm -hmm. So which president served two non-consecutive terms and is therefore counted as both the 22nd and the 24th president. Question number six, then. Who became president following the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963? So you know who the vice president was know who the president was. So who became president following the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963? Question number seven. Clue? Clue, clue, clue. Which president was married to the actress Jane Wyman? Not when he was president, it was somebody else. But who previously, which president, was married to the actress, Jane Wyman? Question number eight. Now, this question is uh, only accurate at time of going to press, as they say, because um, I've not seen Twitter tonight. <laughs> who was the only president to resign from office. So who's the only president to resign from office? So far. And then question number nine, who was president for the duration of the First World War? So who was the president for the duration of the First World War? And then question number 10. What do the 1st, 3rd, 16th and 26th presidents have in common? I think laterally, you'll know this one as well. So what do the 1st, the 3rd, the 16th, and the 26th presidents have in common? There you go. So US presidents. Again, a few moments to uh, have a little think around those ones. Oh, that's a nice one. Right, and answers, US presidents, here we jolly go. Uh, question number one. Uh, in what year was George Washington inaugurated as the first president? So you should, if you know your history, your American history, uh, 1789. So 1789 was when George Washington became the first president of the US. Question number two, the minimum age of somebody who wants to run for the office of president is 35. So you've got to be 35 years old before you can run for the office of president. Seems a fairly random number. Perhaps Patty, if she's online, can tell us why. But 35 is the age for presidents. How many presidents have been assassinated? Four. So four presidents have been assassinated. 
and uh, for your uh, delectation and information, that is, of course, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, James A. Garfield, William McKinley, and John F. Kennedy. So four presidents were assassinated. Question number four, the president whose first lady opened a clinic for drug and alcohol abusers was Gerald Ford. So Betty Ford Clinic, I'm sure you know, but the president was Gerald Ford. And again, put this one in your memory banks for the future. The president who served two non-consecutive terms and is therefore counted as the 22nd and the 24th president is Grover Cleveland. So President Grover Cleveland. Question number six, uh, who became president after the assassination of JFK was Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson took over the job. Question number seven, the president married to Jane Wyman was Ronnie Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Uh, question number eight, the only president to resign from office was, of course, Tricky Dicky. So Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon is the only one to resign from office so far. Question number nine, the president who was uh, in office for the duration of the First World War was Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Thomas Woodrow Wilson was president throughout the First World War. And number 10, you'll kick yourselves if you didn't get this one. The first, third, 16th and 26th presidents are all on Mount Rushmore. So they're the big heads, the big heads on Mount Rushmore are the first, the third, the 16th and the 26th presidents. So there we are, there you go. There's your US presidents round, nicely tucked out of the way. So there you go, that's the first half. Hopefully that got uh, got, you, got you thinking and... Um, you should have uh, picked a few of those out in between. So once again, start uh, totting your various little scores and bits and pieces up. Uh, we'll take a little uh, reload break. I've got to get my timings right now because we started at eight instead. So it's, it's 20.34 now. Um, so we'll come back and do round two or the second half at 20.40. So we'll start again at 20.40. So go and reload. See you in a bit. I'll put some more country music on for you because I know you love it. I left Kentucky back in 49 and went to Detroit working on assembly line. The first year they had me putting wheels on Cadillac. Every day I'd watch them beauties roll by and sometimes I'd hang my head and cry. Cause I always wanted to be one that was long and black. One day I devised myself a plan that should be the envy of most any man. I'd sneak it out of there in a the lunchbox in my hand. Now, getting caught meant getting fired, but I figured I'd have it all by the time I retired. I'd have me a car worth at least a hundred grand. I'd get it one piece at a time, and it wouldn't cost me a dime. You know it's me when I come through your town. I'm gonna ride around in style, I'm gonna drive everybody wild, cause I'll have the only one there is. Very next day when I punched in with my big lunch box and was helping my friend, I left that day with a lunch box full of gear. I've never considered myself a thief, but GM wouldn't miss this one little piece, especially if I strung it out over several years. The first day I got me a fuel pump, and the next day I got me an engine and a trunk, then I got me a transmission and all the chrome. The little things I could get in my big lunch box, like nuts and bolts and all four shocks, but the big stuff was stuck out my buddy's mobile home. 
Now up to now my plan went all right till we tried to put it all together one night And that's when we noticed that something was definitely wrong The transmission was a 53 and the motor turned out to be a 73 And when we tried to put in the bolts all the holes were gone so we drilled it out so that it was dead, and with a little bit of help from an eight out the kit, we had that engine running just like a song. Now the headlights, there was another sight. We had two on the left and one on the right, but when we pulled out the switch, all three of them come on. The back end looked kind of funny too, but we put it together, and when we got through, well, that's when we noticed that we only had one tail fin. About that time, my wife walked out, and I could see in her eyes that she had her doubts. But she opened the door and said, honey, take me for a spin. So we drove up town just to get the tag, and I headed to right on down main drag. I could hear everybody laughing for blocks around. But up there at the courthouse, they didn't laugh, because to type it up, it took the whole staff. And when they got through, through the title, we had 60 pounds. I got it one piece of the time, and it didn't cost me a dime. You'll know it's me when I come through your town. I'm gonna ride around in style, I'm gonna drive everybody wild. Cause I'll have the only one there is around. Uh, yeah, Red Rider, this is the Cottonmouth in the Psycho Billy Cadillac, come on. Oh. Oh, this is a cottonmouth, a negatory on the cost of this machine there, Red Rider. You might say I went right up to the factory and picked it up. It's cheaper that way. Uh, what model is it? Really, it's a 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59 automobile. It's a 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 55, Well, if you're one of the millions who own one of them gas drinking, fisting, clanking, air polluting, smoke melting, four wheel buggies from Detroit City, then pay attention. I'm about to sing your song, Tom. <laughs> Yeehaw. Good. Okay, right. Hope you've all uh, refreshed and uh, resharpened your pencils. How are we going? How are we going? Glasses on. See what's going on. Here we are. There you go. So, Pete's still on it. <laughs> Brian, only knew Valerie Singleton, but she didn't come up. I think that was the problem with Valerie Singleton, Brian. She never 
came up. Uh, US President Southfield. Come on, everyone knows a bit. There you go. <laughs> there we are. Another World War One round. Are we, at least we found your, the, the, not your era, <laughs> I beg your pardon, but the era that you know about, Brian. So that's good. <laughs> Don't put your foot in it again, Rossiter. Okay. Hey, let's crack on then with the uh, uh, second half then. So here we are. So uh, round four, this one's food and drink. Food and drink. Oh, we all like a bit of food and drink, don't we? So all of the answers in this round feature a drink in the title. So should be to get to it through logical thought processes, you would have hoped. So all the answers feature a drink in the title. So question number one. Who were Wham's female backing singers that went on to have a solo career? So who were Wham's female backing singers that went on to have a solo career? I think the word career is probably stretching it a bit, but there we go. Drink is in the, in, in the name. Question number two, then, one out there for your salty sea dogs. What line follows 15 men on a dead man's chest? Ha ha. So, what line follows 15 men on a dead man's chest? And the answer's got a drink in it. Question number three, which UK act won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1981? Do you remember those days when A, we were in the Eurovision and B, we won it? That's a long time ago. So which act, got a drink in the title, won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1981? Question number four, which Wurzels hit song had the same tune as Una Paloma Blanca? So drink in the answer, which Wurzels hit song had the same tune as Una Paloma Blanca? Question number five, written by Neil Diamond. Which song was UB40's first number one UK hit? So the drink in the answer. Written by Neil Diamond, which song was UB40's first number one UK hit? Obviously, also sung by Neil Diamond. Question number six. Which drink, when translated into English, means Aunt Mary? So which drink translated into English means Aunt Mary? Question number seven, with a drink in the answer. Which former English rugby union captain is rumoured to have had an affair with Princess Diana? So which former English rugby union captain is rumoured to have had an affair with Princess Diana? And then question number eight. What's the four-letter name given to a horse's ankle? The answer is a drink. 
So what is the four letter name given to a horse's ankle? Question number nine. What's the novel written by Laurie Lee that was set in Gloucestershire? So what is the novel written by Laurie, Laurie Lee that's set in Gloucestershire with a drink in it? And then question number 10, Phillips, London and Ratchet are all types of what? So Phillips, London and Ratchet are all types of what? There we are. Drink in the answers, drink in the question master. Cheers. Oh, old speckled hen, lovely. All right, got those scribbled down? Then uh, here come the answers. So, question number one, who were Wham's female backing singers that went on to have a solo one-hit wonder? It was Pepsi and Shirley. So Pepsi is the answer to that one, Pepsi and Shirley. Question number two, what line follows 15 men on a dead man's chest? Yo, ho, ho, on a bottle of rum. So rum is your answer to question number two. Question number three, which UK act won the 1981 Eurovision Song Contest? It was, of course, Bucks Fizz. Bucks Fizz. Question number four, which Wurzel song had the same tune as Una Paloma Blanca? It was, of course, I am a cider drinker. I drink it all of the time. So cider is the answer to that one. I apologise for the singing, but I like the Wurzels. Okay. Question number five, written by Neil Diamond. Uh, the song that was also UB40's first number one UK hit was Red, Red Wine. Red, Red Wine. Question number six. This is a good one. Which drink, when translated into English, means Aunt Mary? That's Tia Maria. So Tia Maria is Aunt Mary. Not so sophisticated now, is it? Question number seven, the former English rugby union captain, who's rumoured to have had an affair with Princess Di, is, of course, Will Carling. Will Carling. Question number eight, by Laurie Lee, set in Gloucestershire. Oh, hang on. My connection is unstable. They're just trying to reconnect me. Your connection's unstable, Natalie. Wrong on. That's better. I'm reconnected. I was unstable for a bit. In case you didn't get it, question number eight was Hock. And question number nine, the Lo so Cider again with Rosie. And then question number 10, Phillips. Vodka and orange. So screwdriver is the answer to number 10. Give your heads, get your answers down. So our numbers keep fluctuating people on the call up, down and up, down and round and round. So hopefully they're uh, either the connection is a bit dodgy tonight, which I apologize for, uh, or I'm boring people so much they throw themselves off their sofa. Not sure which it is, but... Uh, We'll keep ploughing on anyway. Good. So hopefully get your uh, get your scores down from uh, that little round. And being drink, I expect fairly high scores from most of you. 
that's the pretty norm for, for our rounds, isn't it? Fits well. So get your points down. And here we are. We'll go on to uh, uh, round number five. And a special request from uh, from Trevor this one. He liked, uh, he liked the homophones round uh, two or three weeks ago. So here we are, more homophones. So remember, just to expel it, so a uh, homophone, uh, a word that's spelt differently with different meanings but sounds the same. So, for instance, the purchaser or a cow shed is a buyer stroke buyer, B-Y-R-E. Okay, got the hang of it. Here we go with the homophones then. So, same word, same sounding word, different spelling, different meanings. Okay, so question number one, to be centered or to moisten meat while cooking. So to be centered or to moisten, 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 <laughs> moisten meat while cooking. The moistening of meat and to be centered. Question number two, an unsecured anchor and not present. So it sounds the same, different words. An unsecured anchor or not present. Question number three, don't say it's not educational. A provincial governor in the Ottoman Empire and a style of window. A provincial governor in the Ottoman Empire and a style of window. I can tell you it's not double glazed, but if that helps. Question number four, duty and horse harnesses. A bit horsey tonight, isn't it? Question number four, duty and horse harnesses. So different words, sounds the same. Question number five, to go backwards and to improve a lawn. So to go backwards and to improve a lawn. Question number six, show disapproval and alcohol. So shows disapproval and alcohol. Talking of which, cheers. A question number seven. The intended victim of a swindler and a brand or product, particularly a car. So the intended victim of a swindler or a brand or product, particularly a car. Question number eight. A person from the Far East and an item of clothing. So a person from the Far East and an item of clothing.
Question number nine. A condiment and calling a group together. Mm -hmm. So it's a condiment. And it's also to call a group together. And then question number 10. To wander and a European city. So to wander and a European city. Wander, not wonder, wander, as in lowly as a cloud. Okay, there we are. Get your, uh, get your little uh, times crossword heads around that lot. Trev struggling. You asked for homophones, so you can work them out. You can work your way through these lot. <coughs> okay, so if you're ready, here we are. The homophones round. Excuse me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> There we go. So, to be centred or to moisten meat while cooking is based. So, base, to be based on a base, or to baste, as in moisten your Christmas turkey. Question number two, an unsecured anchor and not present is away, as in away anchor and away you go. Question number three, so as I say, educational, a provincial governor in the Ottoman Empire and a style of window is Bey. So B-E-Y is an Ottoman um, governor and Bey as in Bay window. Question number four, duty and horse harnesses are tax. So tax is in tax, T-A-X, and tax as in T-A-C-K-S, tax and tax. Question number five, then to go backwards or to improve lawn is reseed. So you can recede backwards or you can reseed your lawn. Question number six, shows disapproval and alcohol is booze. So booze from the audience or booze as in boozing. Question number seven, the intended victim of a swindler or a brand or product is a mark. So a mark or a mark. Question number eight, a Far Eastern person and an item of clothing is of course tie. So a tie person or a tie dangling around your neck. Question number nine, a condiment and also calling a group together is mustard. So mustard or mustering, mustard together. And question number 10, to wander, and also a European city, is Rome. To roam through the cornfields, or to go to Rome and get fleeced for a cup of coffee. Uh, but there we are. So good, there we are. So hopefully, um, you know, some of those filtered through and got your brain working. How did Trev get on there? Four out of ten for Trev. That's all right. That's not bad, Trevor. We're in our penultimate round, of course, uh, before uh, week 10. So today is the day to get the scores. If you've got any low scores, you want to move to one side out of your six out of 10. And then big finale next week. OK, so we'll move on to our final round for the evening. And the final round for the evening here uh, is airports named after famous people. So there you go, airports. Now, this is entirely Natalie's fault. I mean, uh, you know, she hardly ever mentions it. Used to work at an airport, didn't you, darling? <laughs> uh, so airports and uh, famous named after which. So I'm going to give you the name of the person, and you're going to tell me where the airport is. Okay, so I'll give you the name of the person, and you will say what city is the airport in. Could be, could be fascinating. So, which airport is served by JFK International?
So, which city is served by JFK International Airport? Question number two, which city is served by John Lennon Airport? So which city is John Lennon Airport? Question number three is back again. Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan Airport. What city would you fly in and out of for Ronald Reagan Airport? Question number four then. What city is served by George Best Airport? George Best International Airport is in which city? Question number five then, which city is served by Charles de Gaulle Airport? Charlie de Gaulle. So which cities served by Charles de Gaulle? Here's a, here's a, a random one. Which city is served by John Wayne Airport? Didn't know we had an airport, but there we are. John Wayne Airport is where? Question number seven, then. Which city is served by Marco Polo Airport? So Marco Polo Airport is which city? Question number eight. I might give you a half a point for the country because if you get the airport, you really are an international traveler on this one. Genghis Khan. Where is Genghis Khan Airport? Don't complain about the sandwiches, whatever you do. So Genghis or Genghis Khan Airport is serving which city? Okay, question number nine, and we've had this one previously in, in a different way around, but see if you can remember it. So which city is served by Indira Gandhi Airport? So which city is served by Indira Gandhi Airport? And question number 10, if you think about the music genre, you should get this, Louis Armstrong Airport. So what city is served by Louis Armstrong Airport? So that was a fun little round, well, I thought it was fun, interesting round to finish. I have no consideration of those. Some are really, really obvious, some quite not so obvious. Okay, I'll be ready then. Here we go with the answers. So, uh, JFK International serves New York. New York. So, New York is JFK Airport. Question number two John Lennon Airport is, of course, Liverpool. Where else would it be? So, John Lennon Airport is in Liverpool. Now, Ronald Reagan Airport, I think you need to know where he came from. So that's in Virginia, Washington state. So Ronald Reagan is in Virginia in Washington. 
Question number four, George Best International Airport is, of course, Belfast. So George Best is Belfast International Airport. It used to be called something else, Trev, didn't it? <laughs> George Best, well, oh, God. Question number five, Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle Airport is, of course, Paris. So Paris is the Charles de Gaulle Airport. Now, another one, I'm assuming birthplace one, John Wayne Airport, which I've never heard of, never knew this one. Uh, this is uh, Orange County in California. So John Wayne Airport is in Orange County, California. Question number seven, then, Marco Polo Airport is in Venice. So Marco Polo Airport is in Venice. I doubt if it's in Venice, it's probably one of those easy at ones that's 150 miles away from Venice, but it's uh, around Venice. Question number eight. <laughs> it says this is a cracker. So the Genghis Khan Airport is in Mongolia. You can have half a point if you've got Mongolia. And you can have two points. Sorry, Tamir, to drop it on you. If you've got Buyant Ukar. So Buyant Ukar, B U Y A N T U K H A A is is the city in Mongolia. So you can have half a point for Mongolia, and you can have double points if you got Buyant Ukar. And if you did, you're sadder than me and Natalie are. So question number nine: uh, the Indira Gandhi Airport is Delhi. So the Indira Gandhi Airport is in Delhi, and you should have known that if you were listening earlier, children, because we did that about three or four weeks ago. And then question number 10, uh, think about the type of music being a jazz. The Louis Armstrong Airport is New Orleans, New Orleans. Uh, so there we are. There's your airport round. Uh, so as I say, anybody who's got 10 out of 10 on that one is uh, uh, brilliant. Um, hopefully you've managed to work out logically some of them. If you haven't all been there, of course, you know, I, I, I believe you know, holidays to uh, Inner Mongolia are quite popular nowadays. So you may well have been there. So there you go, folks. That's the uh, that's the end of it uh, for tonight. You can go away and breathe and uh, relax and uh, return to your drinks, nibbles, family dogs cats whatever it is you're returning to um hope you enjoyed yourselves remember next week then is week 10 um and then what we will do is we will go oh they go 11 points now available on round six if you manage to if you manage to work to get them um so yeah hopefully um uh you know we'll uh, we'll have a big finale uh, next week um and then i'll talk to damien about how we're going to uh, pick out the the scores and uh, pass that message over to you um so uh, we will see you next week Hope you're uh, getting out there and uh, playing a bit of golf now uh, or getting out there and enjoying whatever else you may do. Uh, look after yourselves. Uh, keep dry. Look, look forward to the sun coming out soon. And uh, thank you very much again. So take care. See you later.